YouTube wants to make money off of Blender, and Red Hat cures the GPL too. Opensource.com teaches you some bash tricks. Mesa 18.1.1 is now available through PPA. And Google has unleashed VR 180 for Linux and not for Windows. And we're going to show you a few silly bash tricks that you can try at home for fun and profit. But that's right. It's another great day for Linux. Anyone, everyone, English fan. So let's go. <laughs> Beautiful people, welcome back to another Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we're going to sit back, relax, and uh, talk about some of the fun things going on in open source Linux in general. Uh, so what was it? Uh, NetBSD uh, is going to kill SMT support. I actually saw that. BSDs in general. They don't trust Intel anymore. It's a real thing. That's a big blow. People are going to talk about mm -hmm. that next week. Um, I've been yeah. stoned. You know me. I'm sorry. That was just on my mind. That is uh, Jill the Freeze Bryant. Um, she's <laughs> chilling out over there. Followed by uh, Pedro Mateus on the Hello. island. Um, we're still working through. Trust me. I got a gang of stuff that showed up like right before the show. And uh, we're hammering on the video stuff right now. We're in uh, one of those horrible nightmare phases for me and adventures for the host yep. because uh, <laughs> things happen before we get started we do like to see what's going on in each other's lives jill you've been playing with a video too right yes i have i i set up a virtual webcam for lgc podcasts on my main broadcasting and animation rig that has 103 video devices installed because of all my years of animating <laughs> and uh, that was a trick I had to. I had five different versions of FFmpeg installed <laughs> just to get it to work, but it's working beautifully. So now I can send uh, uh, my screencast, my screens back to LGC in a high frame rate. <laughs> so that'll be cool. <laughs> well, Pedro, you haven't done anything, right? Uh, actually, yeah, not much. It's uh, with a trip to Portugal, uh, even though only Nori is going, it, these, those were some very expensive plane tickets. Uh. And <laughs> having to pay tax for my Portuguese car that uh, I don't get to drive all that much anymore. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not. I, I'm in cost contention mode. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I'm in the opposite of that because, well, it turns out we've established on multiple occasions. I'm not terribly clever as a human being. But telling a few thousand people that a $70 capture card that does 1080p at 60 works out of the box on Linux has an effect. Mm -hmm. That effect, ladies oh, and yeah. gentlemen, <laughs> is, is out of stock. Because um, <laughs> it's on Amazon. And you know when you order stuff regularly through Amazon, it'll tell you how many of something's left. And that's not mm -hmm. marketing because I've ordered the last thing and went back. You know, I'm going to get one more and it's gone. So... I was telling somebody in Meat Space earlier this week, and I'm like, yo, I just ordered the, the one that showed up today. I was like, go get one. It's like, it's out of stock. I mean, it never went from, like, countdown. It's like, it's gone. Mm -hmm. So hopefully those come back in, because we still need two more of them. We do like our video. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So let's get right into this, because we are going to be talking a little bit about YouTube and uh, the oh, Blender Foundation, and they're not playing nice-nice with each other right now. And it's not just Blender, them. they pulled the same trick with the MIT Open Courseware, which where I first noticed it, I was like, wait a minute, I like that too. Blender is um, 3D open source modeling. It's been around for a long, long time. If you take this at uh, face value, uh, it kind of looks like in the current state right now, if a channel gets large enough on YouTube and it doesn't have ads, it, it's going to get ads. And if, if we're going to be fair to everyone, I think from a business standpoint this makes sense but mm -hmm. from a goodwill mm -hmm. point of view mm -mm. no, no. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh, and you blender foundations like they really don't know what's going on because if you've ever tried to have communications with youtube well <laughs> yeah you, you know how that turns out um you got some thoughts on this jill yeah um this is really annoying um uh, uh, of course, it shows that, that one part of Google is not talking to the other. Google is a sponsor of the Blender Foundation, <laughs> for goodness <laughs> sakes. And this should not be happening. <laughs> and uh, fortunately, uh, uh, Ton and his crew uh, put the Blender Fundamentals videos up on, um, on their website, which is in the show notes. 
And so you can view, the, view them there. And these are the videos I use uh, these to teach my students Blender. And so for me, this was like, what the, <laughs> this, this is not good. But fortunately, uh, the Blender Foundation was really on top of it. And I already had all these videos downloaded. So that helps a lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I can see it, like Van already mentioned, from the business standpoint. It's Google has been operating YouTube at a loss for many years. So they're trying to, if not profitable, they're at least trying to make it break even. And their past few actions with the apocalypse and everything else, they've driven some people away from the platform. And with less people, there's less advertising money to be made. So there's less advertising companies interested in YouTube. It's a bit of a downward spiral, but in the specific case of Blender, it turns out to be a bit of a uh, Hanlon's razor. Never attribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity. Because today, <laughs> <laughs> just this very day, they got a reply on the phone. They actually got someone from YouTube on the phone saying, yeah, we messed up. We're doing a bit of an update to the platform. And well, your uh, channel was hit in error uh, by the new terms of service, which they needed to accept, which they didn't because they hadn't seen them because it was only available on the the new terms of service we're only showing on the new version of the Creator no, Studio. I, I which will say this, uh, it, even on the blog, <laughs> even on the blog, they mailed them the new terms of service to sign. Yeah. <laughs> No, I yeah. think they did a horrible job of communicating what was going on there. And yeah, this is YouTube's going to YouTube is definitely what I, my thoughts about this. And it's automated. This, yep. this, is, this is chaos monkey stuff right here. And they, they have dumb butts that do stupid mm -hmm. stuff. And they take the valve approach of like, well, let's just wait until it blows up. Then we might do mm -hmm. something about it, which is not mm -hmm. a good strategy, but Hopefully they get all that sorted out. Um, let's go from videos to GPL version 2.5. That sounds weird. Yeah, it's uh, two and a half because it's uh, GPL 2 or GPL uh, LGPL 2.1. They have, well, they are very widely used, but they have a bit of a uh, caveat. So if you don't uh, comply to everything that it says, you risk breaking the license and someone could then take you to court over it. Well, uh, there is a provision in GPL3 which addresses that. And uh, Red Hat, in their infinite wisdom, have decided, you know what, maybe it would be a good idea if those uh, GPL2 projects could have that bit of a saving grace. It's, oh, oh, we actually genuinely did not know about that, so we're going to start working on fixing it right now. Please don't sue us. And now they, they're trying to implement that particular... Uh, feature of the license to the GPL2 versions, which I'm all for. Mm. It's really, really awesome to see and good on Red Hat. <laughs> yeah, this is this is really awesome of Red Hat once again. And this will will help make it easier for people to submit code and not be worried about legality, at least for a little bit. <laughs> Was it 60 to 90 days? Yeah, <laughs> 60 believe. to 90 yeah. days. I think, in four, well, this is good. <laughs> Um, I would say the unfortunate thing is a lot of companies don't do anything about it until they get caught. Yeah. Being in violation of uh, this, but having a little bit of leniency is good. You know, you get that little bit of a time to comply before it was like, oh, this person's the bad guy, which, you know, in all fairness, they are. Uh, <laughs> good on yeah, this happened to Tesla. If I, if, yeah, our, our, we did a Tesla article on this mm -hmm. uh, a few weeks ago. <laughs> they, they've definitely done some good work with that. Um, yes. CPTPP. What does it stand for? <laughs> it stands for the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership. You mm -hmm. remember the Trans-Pacific Partnership Agreement that the U.S. bowed out of uh, when Obama was still president because, well, it was described as a terrible deal. And it's back. It's back, and according to the Linux Journal, uh, copyleft terms may become unenforceable in 11 countries under the CPTPP. And kudos to whoever made that flowchart. Flow chart. It's very, very simple, and it's just a broad strokes, but it helped me get the gist of it as someone who is not 
you know, right now directly affected by the TPP because, you know, nowhere near the Pacific. You know me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's um, it's basically uh, of the 11 countries right now uh, that uh, are a part of the treaty, uh, two of them have ratified the agreement. Uh, it was Japan and Mexico. Now, uh, there's also the issue of Australia, uh, Canada, uh, Malaysia, Mexico, New Zealand, Peru, Singapore, Vietnam. All of those will have to either bow out and not ratify the agreement so they don't have to be a part of it, or they do ratify the agreement, at which point there will be issues for copyleft stuff, like free and open source software is very much subject to. So... Let's say you have a license like the GPL. All of a sudden, if your country ratifies this and implements it, you're boned. Mm. Very, very hard, because it's not going to give you any legal uh, coverings under the GPL license, because that GPL license will be unenforceable in your country. Yeah, that's, that's a problem. scary. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I was really taken aback by this article, actually, mm -hmm. because... Uh, you know, to me, this is just really scary. Uh, between this and free software being under attack in the EU, it's it's just not not good for this free software um, mm -hmm. open source community. And um, I noticed that the Free Software Foundation and Electronic Frontier Foundation are busy with the EU, but there was no mention of this on on their websites or the Software Freedom Conservancy res web website. So I'm hoping yeah. to see some of this action. Um, there, of course, and we want companies like like uh, open open companies to support these uh, to help uh, uh, tame these <laughs> mm -hmm. treaties. <laughs> we'll see how that bakes out. Um, our national nightmare is a bit over. How to continue to download Chrome extensions without using the Chrome Store? Yes, a lot of people lost their collective stuff when Chrome's like, "Hey, man, if you you want to." Install plugins from now on. You got to do it from the store unless you just enable developer mode and do it. That, yeah, inline installations are going bye bye. And you know what? I say good riddance to that. I know I seem to be a very, very semi vocal minority of this one because here's the thing I have to deal with other people's laptops on occasion, and it's always mm -hmm. laptops, desktops. I, I don't even touch those. That's like get it away. Um, <laughs> and it's just a gang of stuff they've installed from bizarre websites and here's i i kind of need a list of plugins that people actually install that are not in the web store now jill you brought up a valid point yes yeah one at one time the youtube downloader plugins were not available in the chrome extension store of course because google google didn't want you downloading their <laughs> videos <laughs> so you had to use this this process to uh install those and mm -hmm. um, for everything else, there's YouTube down. Actually, I use 4K video downloaded these days. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a lot of things I can do from the command line quicker. Downloading our own. YouTube, thanks, thanks Google, thanks YouTube. That's the only way we can get the original 60 FPS version of a live stream <laughs> from our own yeah. content. That's brilliant. The thing that surprised me about this mm -hmm. bit of news is that how was this not already a thing? Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, I have to deal with a lot of Windows users at work using Chrome and going even though the uh, NHS network is very heavily uh, moderated and you can't go to certain specific websites either for malicious things or because they promote the use of, uh, you know, uh, substances. It's uh, there's still that random website that because people really like it, they keep going to, and they install that stupid extension that it keeps on bugging them to install. And that causes all kinds of issues and basically opens people up to man in the middle attacks if there are malicious apps being installed through that. So yeah, no, if you want to install something like that, you oh, come on, Pedro, you, 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 you just sound mode. like you're just saying it's for your own good citizen. <laughs> <laughs> It let the developer mode people who know sort of kind of what they're doing actually, mm -hmm. you know, install those extensions after you request them. We are not opposed to letting you have mm -hmm. your Spotify extension or your Amazon uh, mm -hmm. price checker. 
we will let you have those. If they're available in the store, chances are they're probably okay. Well, I mean, this is something we've been doing. I mean, listen, use one of the other browsers. Use Chromium. Use Vivaldi. Use something Opera's mm-hmm. WebKit-based uh, Firefox. Quantum. Mm-hmm. It's a good piece of kit. We get a lot of choices. If this, and Google, yeah, I, I understand the worry. Don't don't get me right on that because they decide to nope something. You're like, oh, man, now I got to go find it. Then you could really end up getting in trouble because then you're on the search. And, of course, the people trying to get you to install the not version of whatever it is you're looking for mm-hmm. is going to be ranked higher in Google search algorithm because reasons. <laughs> I mean, I have this problem with um, Attaway which is yep. available on F-Droid, but not on oh. the Google Play Store. Why? Because it works. It creates a host block list, mm-hmm. host deny. And um, okay, I'm just saying it's an easy, easy way to get around it. And uh, the world's not going to end. So yeah, <laughs> control plus R or simple bash tips, which I brought up at the beginning of the show, man, hidden features and short. I don't know about all that, but there's a couple in here that I was like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to do that. That's why I pulled up a couple of these, man. And Jill, you were a big fan of one of the first ones. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Uh, pseudo uh, bang bang. It allows you, you know, all of us have accidentally typed in commands as not root in mm-hmm. terminal and realized you needed to be root. And and once you type pseudo bang bang, it automatically um, uh, finds <laughs> finds the command that you had not typed in root and puts it in root mode. Um, pseudo so that was that's i've been using that for years actually so i was really happy to see that was on there (laughs) it's one of my favorites uh there's a handy one in here which is basically you know just bang asterisks which Mm -hmm. you can mix and match i mean that's going to go back and apply permissions or any other command to something that you've previously typed in terminal which is neat and the last one you might just want to play it's it's not a command this is going to show you your most used commands in terminal yeah. on your system. I Mine, uh, we were playing around with that earlier this morning in Discord. Um, I was like, huh, eh, it looks legit. Mine's basically, uh, as one would expect, a bunch of FFM commands followed by, you know, video for Linux. And uh, a gang of pseudo commands when I was like, just trying to put something in obey me mode. <laughs> yeah, no, pseudo also wins on my end because, it, yeah, it's pseudo. You need to run it to just get yeah. the package manager going <laughs> yes. uh the it was the fourth or the fifth down actually surprised me nvidia settings apparently mm. i've opened the nvidia settings from the uh, command uh, line a yeah. little too often <laughs> <laughs> i do that a lot too <laughs> the one that caused me to scratch my head was um pacmd which it's like why am i hammering and it's like oh dummy that's because you wrote a little script at startup that automatically renames seven of our sinks in pulse audio so I have at least a fighting chance of getting everything on the right one. <laughs> That's a thing. But those are cool. Those are neat. Go check them out if you don't know about them. Um, up next, Jill, tell us about Katie. Well, no, not uh, Mesa. No, next Mesa. Is the Mesa. Mesa. I don't listen, man. I just saw this picture and I was like, ah, it's horrifying. Oh, oh. Well, it's yeah. Unity. Uh, yes. Or Gnome, I guess. Nowadays, it's just Gnome because, uh, well... Canonical yeah. give up on you today. Canonical. This Tell one me about it, is, Jill. Uh... Okay. <laughs> These are the uh, Mesa has just released uh, new drivers, 18.1.1, which has better Vulkan and OpenGL performance, updated Tegra, Nouveau, and Intel drivers, and as well as support for the OpenGL 4.5 API. And um, what's nice is it will automatically be included in the Ubuntu 18.04.1 update. So when you go to update all your Ubuntu boxes, uh, you'll get the get the new version of Mesa, which is really awesome. Um, yeah. We we've this is really going to help, of course, all of us also who have AMD Radeon cards and Intel. So this is just really great. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's good to see uh, the Mesa drivers plugging along. It's what gives Linux that out of the box experience, especially when it comes to laptops. What's that? You yes. got an Intel laptop? Boom. You run the live session and everything works. It's uh, it's really good to see. And yeah, like uh, Jill already mentioned, you get full API support for OpenGL 4.5, but only if you have a Haswell or newer uh, Intel processor. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. everything below uh, Ivy Bridge or below, it, 
well, you're still stuck with 3.3. That's the best it can do. <laughs> Leaps and bounds. I mean, you can just install this through the PPA. You don't have to worry about it. It's better than the week I remember. This is like 2006, <laughs> 2007, of installing an ATI card going, it can't be that difficult. <laughs> One week later, there was that <laughs> very impotent, like, yay. <laughs> then I immediately put my NVIDIA card back in because I'm a horrible person. Um, Google, let's say something good yes. about them. Yay! They just released the VR 180 uh, Creator, and it's only available on Linux and Mac. Yay! We have a win <laughs> for video production. <laughs> and what this is, is it's VR 180 Creator is a VR video editor and converter for videos shot on 180 and 360 degree cameras, such as the Lenovo Mirage camera and other inexpensive and prosumer VR cameras. And you can use this also to import and convert video footage shot on VR cameras to a more versatile video for file that you can open and edit in desktop video editors like Caden Live or OpenShot that we use under Linux. And it's really too easy to install and run, run, and it is a good use of an Electron app. So that was really cool. And I even did some tests with this with some 2D videos. You can bring in 2D video with the prepare for publishing option, and it will convert it to 3D, which you can then upload to YouTube. Hmm. And it actually right. rendered really fast. I was really impressed with the, the speed of it. It really takes advantage of, of all your cores. So does, does this sweet. really like serve any legitimate purposes outside of what I like after you get your first matrix thing out of the way? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, let's just be real. I mean, everyone's doing that the first time they play with it. But well, um, it is. This is actually the first dedicated editor for VR content. Mm -hmm. So th you know that was a really big deal. There are some proprietary ones that comes with the cameras that are Windows only, but mm -hmm. this is the the first one that's non proprietary and available for Linux. <laughs> This so. is cool. I'm glad to see it. Um, Linux and Mac, <laughs> no love for the Windows, which, hey, yeah. okay. <laughs> That's a, a bit of a change there. Uh, not too yes. long ago, you would have seen a Windows and Mac version and maybe, maybe a Linux version. Exactly. You, you, know, you know, every every time they cut that uh, licensing Android check to Microsoft, they probably uh -huh. think about that. Um, <laughs> yeah. Man, we, we love Microsoft a whole lot. Here's the thing. Now, I've played around because YouTube's had support for like 360 videos for a while. Mm -hmm. And I've used them like on tablets and uh, just the videos. They're neat. I can't necessarily get into it because when I'm watching something, I expect it to be a non-interactive, laid-back, leave-me-alone experience. Mm -hmm. My hands should be yeah. busy with popcorn. Um, but dedicated hardware and something like that, I in certain situations... Yeah. And if you have, you know, the mythical VR headset that you put on your glasses at that point and you just turn around and you can see a video shot in full 360 or Hey, two. wow, that truck looks ripped. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> leave those glasses at home. Just, just leave them at home. <laughs> All right. One last little thing. I, I just wanted to give it a mention as uh, from Zachary Sequin. He's like... He, I don't, it's his open source. He wanted to do it. It's a web player currently under development at this time. It lets you listen to songs from your Apple library on the web. So yep. it, it, there's awesome. nothing more to this. I mean, it's on GitHub for now. Uh, it's just a web player for Apple Music. Uh, it's using Music Kit JS, and I want to warn everyone that this will—it's probably broken right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, when it's something that uh, a black box company like Apple is doing, yeah, they will break it the moment they get a whiff of someone trying but to bypass their system. I love anything that breaks out out of the Apple ecosystem. As someone who has an iTunes feed, the <laughs> only re this is the reason we have an x86 tablet, so it can be contained and put into a closet of shame after its use. Is that's the only way to get to update our iTunes stuff. Mm -hmm. You can't yeah. do it through Linux. You can't do it through Wine. I guess I could do it through a VM, but that would require me to actively purchase a copy of Windows as opposed to buying a $60 tablet. That came like a, yeah. <laughs> so this is neat. I don't know questionable use, but eh, very try it questionable. Out. Uh, just stop using Apple products. Oh. The world will be a better place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> says, says the person with white monitors. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
two of them. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of brilliant. Um, beautiful people, we want to thank everyone supporting this. Uh, if you want to kick us a few shekels, you can. You can head over to linuxgamecast.com, smash that support button, fam. Uh, we got Amazon affiliate links, basically a bunch of countries. You know, we got uh, Deutschland, we got Space France, Canada, um, Britannia, and um, North America, USA. We got a wish list, new egg, humble. Thanks everyone shopping through the humble. Uh, we raised almost two hundred dollars for charity and uh, bitcoins, but we do have a Patreon. This is the easy way to do it. It keeps us loud, keeps us live, keeps us independent, commercial free. Uh, no, we're not going to be trying to sell you a mattress yet. Um, one hundred and seventeen <laughs> beautiful party people. Two hundred fifty-six dollars per Saturday night train wreck uh, and a gang of stuff you get. Uh, we have a bunch of rewards. Check that out. See if anything's like that. Or maybe it's like, I don't need rewards, man. You guys are awesome enough. I'm just going to, you know, make it rain on you. Do I have the penguin loaded up? Oh, man. Maybe I do. Check it out. <laughs> there it is. Yay! <laughs> There's our shilling penguin. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that, that's our version of an advertisement, ladies and gentlemen. How about that for an hour-long show? But I do need to... Uh, we we got to throw some love. We got to throw some love. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. Uh, there was a certain... <laughs> Someone who bought you some HDMI splitters. But I think me. he gets a buy four now. <laughs> I can understand the purpose of creating a limited liability partnership was I don't own anything, but Pedro's not understanding that. Um, <laughs> well, the, you're you have it in your hands. There, you have it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's also fun to get expletive deleted about. Uh, <laughs> all right, check it out, Matt. Hi, Maddie. You know you love him. Not Yay. one. Not one. But two horrible torture devices, HDMI splitters. <laughs> These, like, this one's going to go for this, and this one's going to go down here. So, okay. another gang of stuff that I ordered today is cables, another video encoder, and more cables for the cables, because uh, I genuinely want to crawl up <laughs> under all of this stuff. But well, Fen lives in cableception, where cables have cables. <laughs> Dude, it, 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 it's a little bit terrifying uh to give everyone let me see if i can get that high lit uh project bifrost is what we're working on because we've got the audio stuff sorted it's good we like it but our biggest issue is every time pedro wouldn't you agree every time we get something that kind of works for everything mm -hmm. works for the video works when something goes wrong oh yes and you know what? You know what? After um, five years of that, it's just like, how about we just build a system that they can't mess up? Yes. And that That's why we're working on Project Bifrost. And, you know, a slight exaggeration. I only dream I could have that Hello Kitty case. I've looked. <laughs> I've seen that in person. But... This is our little update. Jotunheim, our video bridge. Jordan's hammering away on that. I bought out of my pocket because I wanted to participate in this too. I've got one encoder. We got one. The other one with Patreon. Uh, Maddie with the two encoders. So we're getting there. Give us about a mm, month, two months, and you're, you're going to see it slowly, hopefully, get better. Maybe. <laughs> Pedro, if it doesn't get better, I quit. Um, <laughs> I'm done. Jill, you, you can have Pedro um, in the divorce. Okay. He's my fam. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's do a slice of pie. Uh -huh. Yay. Okay. Power <laughs> so, for the pie. What is this about, Jill? <laughs> okay. This is a high-performance Raspberry Pi battery power system with UPS and power manager. It's really awesome. Um, the power management options include boot up and shutdown button touch options, input voltage, battery voltage, and RTC functionality. And mm -hmm. right now, there's an older version of it available for only $35, which is in the show notes. And this thing and works with the entire spectrum, including the Zero W, right? Yeah, yeah. It works with every version of the Pi. And this is actually really, really, really important because this is so needed for mission-critical Raspberry Pi projects, for projects that need wireless solutions, and for using a Raspberry Pi server. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we've needed a, a, a nice uh, a power pack, a backup UPS solution for the Pi for a while. 
And uh, it looks reasonably yeah. slick. 1500 milliamp lipo and uh, an optional 600 for low power apps, two amps continuous. So you, you, you can get away with a, a little bit of fun with this. It's, yeah. yeah. And they also include the software that you need if you want to make use of that smaller battery for those low power the applications. You can tell the applications like you use that battery instead mm -hmm. and yeah. they provide the software if you buy the uh, the battery pack and it was kind of genius uh especially on like the regular sized pies not the zero modules how it integrates with the uh, gpios it gives you the little pass through if you want to use something else with the gpios as well so that's that's really well thought out good job i'm yeah, digging it awesome. and um get out there make your own butter robot it'll be yeah. brilliant <laughs> Up next, uh, Who Pie. That's right, a working original Doctor Who K9 prop, but is it a good doggy, Joe? Yes, it is. <laughs> Affirmative, mistress. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I actually do have a robot K9. Uh, uh, they only made a, a few hundred of them, and I actually do have one, but I didn't get it going. <laughs> but, anyways, um, I've actually seen many of these canines at conventions over the years, including one controlled by Raz Pi, but this one is far more sophisticated. It uses machine learning to and room mapping using ultrasound sen sensors. And that's just, that's, that's really, really it's cool. Aruba. They yeah, made it's, a canine Roomba. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and, and like Ven was saying, this was actually one of the original prop canines that was in, in a horrible condition that he fixed up. And then uh, put all this functionality in and made it an awesome robot. So what better use? I love this. This is miles ahead of my um, now terribly deceased <laughs> Roomba that I might have mm -hmm. like uh, hot glued a steak knife to and made it scream exterminate. <laughs> um, but no, that, that's really cool. Um, yep. I'm Affirmative, mistress. <laughs> it's got three uh, three sensors in the front, and yeah, it completely learns its surroundings by itself, as long as it has power. <laughs> well, that's true, and you know, only well, two out of three of them are bent on world conquest, and <laughs> I don't care what you say, School's Out was a good episode. Um, <laughs> still a better ratio than the Tickle Me events. This is true. Uh, hey, if you want to talk to us, uh, how can they do that? Well, you could do that very, very simply by going to LinuxCapeCast.com and hitting the contact button. Make sure you go down to the uh, selection box and you pick LWDW, then fill out the rest of the form. If you'd like to get in touch for the other shows we do, or ask Jordan for relationship advice or send us some keys, well, there's an appropriate category for just that. On this show, though, we appreciate your feedback. We appreciate your questions. We appreciate your hints, mm -hmm. thoughts, allegations, and even some things you probably better left than said. But this week, we start off with mm -hmm. the rabbit. And the rabbit has quite a few questions. My desktop has dual HDMI ports. Will Linux drive both of them? How do I set the output? How are they controlled? Does GNOME or KDE work best? Is there, wrong there, a best distribution for multi-monitor? So, let's see. Mm -hmm. Dual <laughs> HDMI ports. Yeah, Linux will drive those. No issues. It's not like it got hungry and ate one. Yeah. <laughs> um, what was there? Step one, we need to know what we're working with because yeah. on board or discrete GPU <laughs> or NVIDIA. Because if it's NVIDIA, yeah. do you know what their steps are? Plug them in. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's not NVIDIA because NVIDIA cards only have one HDMI port. Incorrect. Yeah. The uh, nine, uh, no, the 1050 low profile, two HDMIs. Yeah, that, they do. That two HDMI. Yeah, because oh. I was looking for a cheap uh, VP8 <laughs> encoder for 150 bucks. Okay. Yeah. All right. It would never be actually plugged into a monitor, but yeah. Yeah, because even my 750, it only has the one HDMI, one display port, and one VGA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, I think uh, I don't have an, I'm soon to have experience with Intel integrated, but I. Yeah, Intel Intel can push to 1080p monitors uh, since Broadwell from HDMI, no issues. And how are they controlled? Well, they're controlled by X Render, which you can Google yeah. if you want to learn some more about that. No more KDE. Which one works best? Well, Ven's going to say a wrong answer. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, Pedro, I was going to say wrong question. Um, <laughs> wrong question. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, uh, here, two monitors, though. I think both Gnome and KDE can glue stick their munch way. Uh, yeah. yeah. If, if it's if it's an extended uh, one uh, X session extended desktop through both monitors, no issues. Both Gnome and KDE will work just fine. If you want to do uh, separate X screens, no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just no. <laughs> well, yeah, as like Katana pointed out um, in chat, is yeah, it's XFC, you just feed it whatever, and it's like, all right, put something on yep. it. Um, yeah. So, is there a control panel with Intel, or is it, do you just have to uh, go straight up with XRender and do you it? You can no. go to XRender, no. or you can use the XFC uh, display okay. uh, setting panel. Uh, and- there's one for GNOME and KDE as well, just. Uh, Look for displays while you're in, in the control center for whichever distro you pick, because that sort of answers the last question. The best distribution is one where you're comfortable in, one that you yeah. will mm-hmm. easily learn it. Uh, so pick one and try and sort it. Experimentation is key when it comes to Linux. <laughs> What were you saying, Joe? Yeah, yeah. Well, I found it, it. It's not really the distribution that that's the limiting factor. It, it's often the window manager <laughs> that has <laughs> issues with more than if you're doing more than two monitors. So, um, um, uh, I yeah, I, I XS, XFCE four works great. Um, Multi monitor. I use Flexbox and Window Maker. They work great with four monitors. Um, mm-hmm. Actually, all the GNOME will as well. It just mm-hmm. You know, it's and KDE does too, unless KDE pretty universal. Crashes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to say this: if you're asking these questions, I'm not picking on you at all. Is just go ahead and get the latest uh, Ubuntu. Yeah. yeah. And install it. I think out of the box experience of set it yes. and forget it. Especially if you just have dual monitors, two monitors, it, it's going to be a non. You probably have an easier time than you would on a Windows box any day. Yeah. Yeah, oh, definitely. They might be the wrong way around because uh, Linux has this nasty tendency of uh, flipping the uh, monitors around contrary to what Windows does. And so it enumerates monitors differently. So you may have to drag one to the other side. That's that's about it. Exactly. And uh, Easy peasy. And I look forward to you uh, replying back saying, well, this is with my 1999 Matrox ISA. <laughs> <laughs> Well, oh, Mesa well, can drive actually, Matrox. Actually, it would, yeah, it would still work great with that. I still have a, a couple of my old Matrox Millennium Millenniums that will run uh, multi monitor, no problem, <laughs> in oh. today's Unix <laughs> Linuxes. <laughs> All right, a next question, thoughts, hints, and allegation comes from Dolus and says, um, mm-hmm. "This is what uh, stupid K1 crashes." As Pedro mm-hmm. is learning on a weekly basis. Watch his live stream. It's brilliant. Just watch it for the Th- fire. That was the game. That one was the game. <laughs> uh, Dolus writes, this is what keeps me off plasma, basically KDE. There's a particularly bad bug that causes K1 to crash when alt-tabbing out of a game, running in full screen. I didn't even know about that, Pedro. Was that legit? It's uh, only certain games, uh, especially games that use OpenGL 3. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have yet to see it with stuff like Dying Light, I can alt tab and K win will hold. But if it's something like using OpenGL 3 or 3.3 mm-hmm. and it's running full screen, I alt tab and it's consistent, it's reliable, it's a reported bug, they're aware of it and they still haven't fixed it. So, yeah, it's uh, that's the problem with K win. I am the idiot who's still running KDE and trying my best to make it work. And if I could get the advanced window rules with uh, Mate, I would be using Mate. I would drop KDE so fast it would live a crater the size of Portugal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, oh, Martin wow. Wimpress for the win. <laughs> thing, I don't know. Advanced one that I just couldn't you pick a better excuse. It's really useful, especially if you have those games like SDL 1.2 games. Okay, okay. That you can uh, here, full screen. Okay, it. work with me. Okay. Work with me. <laughs> On one hand, I, I have like something that's really useful or the chance of a game crashing if I alt-tab. <laughs> it's not the game that crashes. It's K-Win. <laughs> oh, that's not exactly better now, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's, yeah, no. The problem here is K-Win. And I've managed to avoid 
a lot of the uh, the crashes from Kwin <laughs> just by disabling the built-in compositing. I just use Compton on top of KDE because Compton is just a better compositor. But it's old and it's not updated. <laughs> yeah, it's stable. It works. It works. <laughs> <laughs> Jill, do you have any thoughts on this one? Uh, yeah. Uh, just don't use plasma. <laughs> no, <can't wait. laughs> Don't use any version of KDE after 1.3. It, it just went downhill yeah. after that. Um, all right, beautiful people. We're not going to do any better than that, so we might as well tap mm -hmm. those credits. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is really, really annoying. It's You have what could possibly be the single most complex and most inclusive uh, window manager at your disposal and it's broken it's buggy it crashes it's reliable when it crashes it's yeah wow <laughs> why don't you just use gnome like a normal person because <laughs> my name is not <laughs> Matthew Commando <laughs> <laughs> I don't know uh, he, he was using unity so yeah yeah he used that for a long time <laughs> Oh, uh, no, Bye, he's going to complain because one of the uh, hyphens was the other way around. <laughs> Bye, <laughs> Shatwell. 